Hey, everybody. Hello. 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 Um, all right, I'm setting up a couple things here. Is banana. That's a good one. That is a good one. Mine is still better. <laughs> You're consistent. That's what I like. You're consistent. Um, okay. Yeah, but mine is also better. <laughs> okay. All right. You know what? I think mine's the best. I disagree. Maybe everyone should just be Randall Davidson. <laughs> the world would be a better place. Very confusing. <laughs> then nobody uh, knows who the actual band of David is. All right, I'm going to test some stuff. Tell me if you hear. Ooh, let me double check. Tell me if you hear this. I hear that. Yeah. You can hear it well? Yes. But it sounds like yesterday. Excellent. Yesterday's project. It does. I thought you were talking about the Beatles song. I was like, no, no it doesn't. Not even close. No, nope. it sounds like yesterday's project. Okay, so if I'm just going to go ahead and start. So I think most of you, well, definitely most of you weren't here yesterday because we only had two people yesterday due to techno technological snafus. Um, I'm going to mute you, Mason. And then, uh, but basically what, we, what we've been doing is we've been collaborating, we've been writing this song. And what I did last night is I sort of prepared a project that needs drums on it. And I'm gonna record MIDI over this song. And then um, I'll show you how to edit it, how to quantize. Um, I might even show you some mixing tips, um, but we'll see how far we get. And I'll start, and I'll probably have like 20 minutes to talk about what I want to talk about, and then I'll just open it up and we can, we can talk about general MIDI questions. So here we go. So this is Logic. Um, and let me just play you what I have so far. I just sang this five minutes ago. Seen the world from here. There's nothing to say, only gotta keep you near. But then you slipped away. John had a daughter, treat her like a brother. John had a sister, never thought I'd be seen. John wants a son. So that is the song. It's not, could everyone hear that fine? Yeah, okay, yes. cool. So <clears throat> what we have here is we basically have a verse. This part's the verse. Then we have a chorus. Rock and roll, yeah. And then we have this sort of outro bridge part. Gotta let some people in, hold on. Um, oops. Um, so this has most of the stuff that it needs. Um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a virtual instrument and I'm gonna start recording MIDI. So in Logic, what you do is you go to track and they're, they're called virtual instruments, they're called software instruments, whatever. I'm gonna create it, and it's gonna be this blank thing here. And the way it works in Logic is you open up a library and you have a bunch of files you can kind of look at. Um, does everyone, let me know if you're like mega confused right now. Like has anyone seen 
kind of how to open up virtual instruments in their DAW. Um, actually, let me open this up for a second to see. Xander, if you're talking, I don't think I can hear you. Um, what what DAWs are people using right now? You can put it in the chat. You can actually, yeah, share it. Actually, share it out loud because it's kind of annoying for me to go to chat. No, it's not. I have it right here. FL Studio, GarageBand. Oh, GarageBand, you should, it, it'll look exactly the same. You'll basically create a software instrument, and then this little thing should come up, and if you click this thing in the top left corner, you'll have all these sounds appear, and then you can just uh, select them, okay? So, um, is FL Studio kind of like that? Have you messed around with that, Tim? Uh, yes. I'm actually using it right now. I'm writing a song on it. Oh, great. You can kind of work alongside then. Um, okay, so let me let someone in again. Um, okay, so I have this instrument. I'm going to pick a drum kit. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, and now if you don't have, so what I have here, if you look at my Hello. screen. Oh, hey, yes, can we can hear you. Can you hear we me can, now? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, good. Um, hi. Welcome, welcome. So if you have something like this, this will plug in with a printer cable directly into almost everyone's computer, and your computer should really easily attach to it and recognize that it's attached to that keyboard. So here, let me see. Can, are you sure that it's a printer cable? It or literally, it an that's a USB cable. It will, it'll look like this. It's sort of like a rec, it's more of like a that's square. A, a USB. Yes. Also right. called, also called a printer cable because it's commonly used with printers. Um, Ethernet. Huh? I thought that was an Ethernet cable. Nope. Oh. Um, well, then we just have a weird printer. Uh, I think I just have an old printer. Okay, so I'm going to actually use a thing called musical typing that comes with almost every DAW. And it's kind of annoying, but since it comes with every uh, DAW, I'm going to show you how I use it. So window musical typing. It looks like this. Who here... Has everyone used something like this before? Yeah? Okay, so yes. it is limited in a lot of ways, but what is cool is it allows you to change the parameters. So you can change the octave here, like right here. Like it's giving me symbols and stuff. But once I change the octave, now it's going to give me different sounds. And you can kind of explore... Obviously, if this were a piano, it would just give you the lower notes and the higher notes. But a drum set is set up in a way where if you're curious about using drums, this is generally how it's set up. You have this kick drum here, the low kind of stompy thing right there. You have a snare there, and you'll usually have a variety of snares, like... And then you'll have your... So these are usually snares. And then you'll have hi-hats, which can either be closed like this. Uh, another version of closed, which is where you kind of step on it, actually. And then you have an open one. And what's cool is drum sets are set up in a way where the hi-hat can do this, like... So a hi-hat works by opening and closing, and this, this will ring out as long as it lasts until you hit the closed one. So this creates a cool effect when you're doing something like... Or disco uses it a lot, like... Because sometimes you want it to close and it has a cool effect because it goes... And then those are the main staples that we'll use today to create our drum sounds. 
And I know that if you're not using drums, you're probably like, get on to just showing me what MIDI looks like, please. So unfortunately, I'm going to be talking about drums for a few minutes, but I'm going to record. One. Oh, I got to turn my click on. All right, here we go. I'm going to add a thing called a backbeat. Has everyone heard of what a backbeat is before? It's called a backbeat because, so most, it's called common time, right? You have four beats in a measure. The backbeat is not the front, it's the back. So it's not one, three, one, three. People, you know, kind of make fun of big crowds who clap on one and three. I don't know if you've heard that before. It's kind of funny. So the backbeat is two and four. And I'll show you what that sounds like. Um, two, three. So, two, three, four, one, two. If I played the beat here, that feels really kind of clunky and slow. Or just bad. I don't know. It just sounds bad. But if I go... That's called the backbeat. Um, not every style of music uses a backbeat, but a lot of them do. Like uh, almost everything on the radio uses a backbeat. You can have a, th like there's a, Nathan and I were working on something called a Motown beat where it does this like, oops, it does this thing like, where the snare is on every beat. And you can have like, where the snare is doing other things than just playing the backbeat, but what it's really doing is emphasizing, it's still emphasizing one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's still emphasizing two and four. So that's what a backbeat is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down my backbeat first. And what's nice about most songs you'll see up here, the tempo is constant. So it's pretty easy. I know in a lot of compositions, the tempo won't be constant, but I'm gonna show you what I do here. I'm gonna just lay down a backbeat, only putting the snare on tune four. Eric, you didn't record the whole song, why not? Well, because I just laid down the backbeat and I'm just going to put it everywhere for the rest of the song. Wait, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yep. Um, copy and paste MIDI, everybody. It's the best thing in the world. Do not, I cannot stress it enough. Just copy and paste. It's so easy. And I'll, I'll even show you what you can do with MIDI. So, or what you can do with copy and paste. When you record MIDI, it looks like these little blocks. I'm going to show you something really quick right now. So it's these little blocks. This is what I recorded. I can, I can move it here. Now it's over here. This is going to sound stupid. Why would I do that? I wouldn't do that. But you can do that. You can move, I can move this block up. Now it's up here instead. I can co copy and paste it here. So now I can go like this. That's actually kind of sweet. I'm going to do that. That kind of feels good. Um, I could even do this. I'm going to get out of here. Um, I'm going to create a new instrument, and I'm going to find a different kind of drum that I like, like an electronic drum kit. Um, let's use, what's fun? Which one of these sounds fun? Pick one, somebody. Major yes. Crush. Major Crush. All right, new band name, Major Crush. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. Um, okay, what am I looking for here? I want a snare.
D. D? All right, let's try it. Good job. Two, three. Hey, never seen the world from here. That's a major crush if I've ever heard one. Let's try. Let's try something that is a sort of a different sound, a different snary sound. Hey, never seen the world from here. I kind of like that. I think that'll be fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy and paste this MIDI and I'm just going to put it down on another track. And now I can line this up with whatever instruments I want. I think it was that. And this, I think I didn't want this one. No thanks. And now... Easy. Wow, super easy. Um, so we got a couple snares here. And since this is our backbeat, what I want to do is I actually want to quantize it. Who here has not heard of quantizing? Raise your hand. Okay, so quantizing is this, uh, basically what it does, it does sort of what Muse score or Finale does, where when you write something and it sounds like metronomically perfect, um, kind of sounds like a robot, that's what quantizing is. So as long as you know um, what your tempo is and you recorded it mostly to, you know what beat you want it to line up with, you can quantize something and it'll snap all these little blocks of information. I'll zoom in so you can see it. So here, this is beat four right here, and it's a little early, right? If it were here, it'd be a little behind. I want it to be exactly here. What you could do is you could go and move it there. Now it's exactly on beat four, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shortcut where I'm going to highlight this. Let me get my screen a little bigger. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to, there are a lot of ways to do it. You can go up here. I'm going to click on, I right clicked on it. I'm going to MIDI and I'm going to quantize. And now I'm going to pick the smallest note unit that I know I need, or actually the largest one. So like if I pick 64th note, it's going to snap to the 64th note grid that those notes are closest to, which means there's a, it'll probably, I might be more than a 64th note off. So I'm going to, I know that it's one, two, three, four. These are quarter notes. I'm going to snap it to a quarter note and I'm going to make sure you can see what happens when I do it. There's our information. Whoop! Watch down here. <laughs> oh no, it blocked it. Uh, okay, watch down there. MIDI, quantize, quarter note. Watch down there, watch down there, watch those blocks. I'm going to click it. Boink! Everything that I just quantized is now locked up to the quarter note. Is that? That one doesn't even look like it is. Oh, no, it is. Okay, we're good. So now I know these are quantized. And since I already know, as the composer, that I want a backbeat all throughout the song, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it, Command-C, and I'm going to paste it. Cool, right? Now, let's listen to it for a second. Kind of loud. Who here has a, uh, hmm, how should I put this? Basically, you have these things over here that tell you, and every DAW has these, every DAW has these. You have these little, these are your tracks. I have these strings here, these MIDI strings that sound like this. I have me singing. I have electric guitar grooving along, a little groovy bass line, and our backbeat. Right? Um, who can tell me 
and all these tracks have the exact same parameters on them that I can edit. Who here knows what M means over here? It just showed you, but uh, back here, go ahead. Oh, speaking of mute, mute, just kidding. Um, um, yes, mute, M means mute. So what I can do if I wanna listen to how this sounds and I don't wanna hear my voice, click M. Cool. I don't want to hear the strings. Easy, right? Um, I think that notation software has these basic parameters too, so this is just good to know. Um, what does S mean? Someone else, what does S mean? Solo. Solo, yes. The opposite of mute. If I only want to hear but then the bass, I press S. If I also want to hear only bass and electric guitar, I can also hit S on electric guitar. And I'm only hearing those. So you can solo multiple things, but whatever is soloed will pop through, okay? Um, what else do we got here? We have R. What do you think R means? It has a big red thing around it. Record. Record, yes. So what happens when you press R is it, it's called a record enable. And it means, look out, when you press record, this is going to start replacing the information that's already there and record over it. That's what R means. So, and usually you'll hit R on your keyboard to start the recording thing, the process. But um, like down here, if I pressed R on this drum set, it will, well actually let's do this. If I, if I started pressing R on this microphone, I'm gonna start here. I pressed R, it recorded over that. That was stupid, I should grow up. Um, that's what R means. You can do that with MIDI, you can do, and you can do that with multiple things at a time, but for most people's uses, you'll probably record one thing at a time because you'll oh, put down this. What does it mean when the button is inverted like that, when the R is red? Because when the, the R is white. You know what, I've, I actually don't really know. I think it means, oh watch, I think it just means that's the one that's highlighted. Like if I go here, oh, it's gonna go there. Actually, let me, let me see, like if I do this and I press R, I think it just automatically record enables whatever is highlighted. So pressing it again is kind of superfluous. The thing I've noticed with MIDI um, mm -hmm. files is sometimes when you record, it'll, it'll actually like join the two tracks or the two things that you record. Like it'll play, when you play something, it'll play over what you have, but it'll keep the old stuff as well. Oh yeah, that's true. Here, let's look at it. Um, like, yeah, I'll record I over. Or disable that feature. So MIDI is interesting because um, it'll, I can still record. Like it's not like if I was recording over my voice, I wouldn't hear my voice right now, but MIDI, you can see on the keyboard right now, it's still automatically playing it, but I could go like... And now, if we look at our MIDI information, it's recorded all of it. So you can just record over MIDI um, and it'll do that. But What's nice though, Mason, about that is you don't, I don't think you need to disable it because MIDI is so easy to remove or ignore. Like right now, I can just hit Command Z and this whole thing I did is gone. So MIDI, you don't even have to worry about whether you record over something or not because it's so easy to delete. It's so easy to recreate. It's so easy sure. to quantize. Um, but that is true. That is, that threw me off for a little bit as well. Okay, so I laid down this MIDI stuff here. I, what are some elements of a drum that I'm missing? Anybody, anybody, anybody. 
uh, hi hat or maybe maybe the downbeat. Oh yeah. Okay. So we have a hi hat. I'm gonna create a new. Whoops. Not what I wanted. Software instrument. Remember these are that's what these are called. Software instruments. Virtual instruments. MIDI. They play MIDI. I'm gonna create another one of those. And I'm going to find my my instrument folder. Where do I go? Where do I go to find my instruments in Logic? Where do I go? Uh, Bean Boy, do you know where I go? The library. The library, yes, up here in the left corner. You'd be shocked at how many years it took me to <laughs> before I realized it was sitting up there the whole time. Um, how many years did it take you? Three years. Really? Yep. And when the library yeah, went I, away, I, I basically just had to create a cool. new session because I was like, all the instruments went away. I don't even know where they are anymore. So I'll just have to start over. <laughs> but that's In okay. the help menu didn't tell you that? You didn't see the big question mark up there and click that? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's weird how lazy people can go so far out of their way and actually work harder because they're lazy to do certain things. So I don't know what to tell you. I think I was lazy. Um, so uh, Xander said hi-hat or downbeat. I'm going to talk about the hi-hat right now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk about the hi-hat. Because if you want, what's really interesting, and I would recommend this, I know you're all YouTube savvy and stuff. Um, if you go on YouTube and you type in like Pharrell making a beat or like whatever producer like making a beat and w when you watch their process you'll see like how they choose the sounds how what order they choose to lay down the tracks and usually they'll start with this backbeat for drums specifically because it really gives you like the rhythm you know that you're gonna hear joan had a daughter bum, 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 bum. you know that's gonna be there then they usually Producers will fill in the hi-hat, which is what I'll show you right here. And the hi-hat is sort of like, you've heard it in trap music for sure. Uh, I'll show you what the hi-hat sounds like in trap music. It's on this instrument called an 808. Usually, oh my gosh. It's been doing this thing lately and I don't like it. Um, there we go. Okay. So an 808, a hi-hat sounds like that. Um, and it, to me, I don't really know how to describe it other than it sort of just keeps a consistent, it's almost like the metronome. And it's the thing when you see a drummer, they'll basically be like, booms, cats, booms, cats. The hi-hat is that thing that they keep going like this with. So here, uh, the beat is here. Oh, let me turn this back up. I do something like this. There's nothing to say. You could do, you could do a quarter note hi hat, which sounds like, you know what it sounds like, but it sounds like this. You could do an eighth note. You could do like up. Maybe I'll change it. I'll have a quarter note hi hat for the um, for the verse, and then maybe I'll change it to an eighth note hi hat or a quarter note open hi hat. Who knows? I actually don't want an electronic drum sound for this though. I'm gonna go to Liverpool. I'm horrible at accents. That was literally my attempt at an accent. Um. All right, cool. Sound like Ringo. Here we go. Two, one, two, three, four. Hey, never seen These guys are loud. There's nothing to say. And since I know that I just want a quarter note hi-hat on that beat, I am gonna, what am I gonna do here? I want these to lock up to the grid. Quantize. Quantize. Donut knows it. Good job. 
and, and maybe also uh, delete the first half of it, shorten it or something. I don't, I don't know if you meant to have the second bit be like that or not. I, that's exactly right. Since it's going to be a loop, I'm going to find the, uh, I'm going to find just like the measure or two that I like, and then I'm just going to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So, um, I'll show you another method of quantizing. You'll notice up here in this track area, you just see it says quantize. I'm going to highlight what I want to quantize. Go there. They, MIDI, there are so many different ways to quantize. If you ever get lost and you're like, what is that thing called? How do I go there? Just type like how to quantize in FL Studio, how to quantize in Logic. And it, there are like eight ways. They really don't want you to lose it. So we said this was a quarter note beat. I'm going to hit quarter note. Let's see how it looks. Tss, 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 tss. Okay, that's good. And honestly, we only need one measure, so I'm just gonna take, yikes, let's make this clear. We're gonna take this first measure here. And here's something that's also really nice. Um, in Logic specifically, there is, let me find it. I use the quick key so often, I don't even know where it is. Um, I wanna trim this by hitting it's an edit it is do you see it trim yeah. oh wait no split split okay so it says split regions at playhead command t so what this means is wherever it's i move also in those little um the thing the little two boxes i was showing you the other day it's the little scissors tool oh up here Right, yeah. I can choose, I can choose. So this is a whole other, there's so many things to look into on a DAW. Um, there are so many tools and it's all to make things easier. But there might be the, if you open up your score editor, it, I think the actual thing you're looking for, the at playhead is down there. I, it might be the scissors tool. Well, what I sure do- the scissors tool. Well, what I do is I don't even, I don't even use a tool. What I do is I get my playhead wherever I want it. And I'm like, okay, I want to highlight the thing I want to cut. I'm going to click on it to highlight it. And it starts here. I want it to end here. So I'm going to hit Command T, but I'll just do this here. A split at playhead. Boink. Now these are two different things. This is the only thing I want. I'm going to delete this. And now I know that I want this for the whole verse, which goes up to goes up to there so I'm just gonna copy and paste here's a really handy thing for logic and GarageBand users specifically if you hit option and click on something it will instantly create a copy of something that you can click and drag around so I prefer to use that method versus um, having to hit copy and then going to where I want and then hitting paste I'd rather just be like, this, I want it, I'm gonna put it here. This, I want it, I wanna put it here. To me, that's way easier. And I'm sure other DAWs have a method of doing that, but it's very, very handy. Um, okay, so now we have our hi-hat. I'm going to actually copy and paste this here. And I'm going to do that a little bit more, and I'm gonna just highlight it. And I want, so I'm doing this, I want the same rhythm. Um, you get out of here. I want the same rhythm, but I want it on an open hi-hat. And Logic does this for me, where we see hi-hat closed. You can do this for notes and chords and whatever. Like say you just wanna do like a transposition of a song or a piece. You can just grab all the notes and just be like, mm, I actually don't want it on F sharp. I actually want it on B flat. All the MIDI that I highlighted, all the MIDI I highlighted went up from here to here. That's how easy MIDI is. So here, now I changed, um, you'll see when I go like this, 
This is the same MIDI information I had at the beginning. I just have copied and pasted and moved it. So you'll hear the change. But then you slipped away. Okay. Whatever, right? The other thing um, you can do. Um, yeah. If you don't like the loudness of the open hi hat there, mm -hmm. um, you can, if you hit the little um, up at the top there, there's that little wavy button with the uh, two dots in it. This? Is this automation? Yeah, you can hit, you see where it says read? Yep. If you hit latch, you can. Yep take the volume down in that louder section there and bring the volume of that uh, hi-hat down just in that one section. That's true. And you know what? You know what I'll actually do? I'll do, I'll do you one better. I'm going to create a duplicate track. So this is extremely handy because that's true, Mason, but I'm going to show you a simpler route. So if you have something, if you have like a part of a piece that um, is louder in some areas and quieter in some areas and you want to figure out how to balance it. One route is to use automation, which is what Mason is saying here. Like that is loud right there and I want the volume to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and I'm going to drag this down, let's say. This is pretty complex stuff. Don't worry about this if you're like, what? Um, and now. Yes, yeah, you want to watch it. Watch what happens here. This is our volume. Watch what happens to this number when we get here. So that's one way of doing it. Um, I am going to undo all that hard, hard work. And I will show you another way of doing something like that. Um, I'm going to label this hi-hat closed, and then I'm going to duplicate the track. Nope. Command I, D. I know it's Command D. I, I want to find... Maybe it's whatever. It's Command D. I use these quick keys so much that I don't know. I want to be like, this is where you find it if you don't know the quick keys. But you hit Command D. It duplicates the track. And now I'm going to call this Hi-Hat Open because that's what it is. And I'm going to copy and paste all this information here. And you're going to be like, why are you doing that? What I can do is I can find the spot where... Now it's Open Hi-Hat. I'm going to make this track all open hi-hat, and I'm going to delete everything here. And then I'm going to leave this closed hi-hat up here. I'm going to delete that. And now, now I can change the volumes however I want. So what's really nice about MIDI is you can you can copy and paste and split up like you can split up one instrument into like five different tracks if you want like have like loud violin quiet violin medium violin reverb violin and it can all be the same instrument but you're just use you have different midi tracks for different sections which is what i have here um, um do, you, do you have any advice on how to keep track of all your different instruments like because whenever i try and do that whenever it gets to be like a lot of instruments like i start to have trouble like keeping track of everything like all at once eventually it seems like it's like oh god they're like like on the side of the screen they're like if Here? it's like i have to scroll down all the way up and down to see all the different instruments you know do you have any advice on how to just like keep track of all of that to be able to I, work so what i would do when you're keeping track think of what if you're writing like a symphonic score, keep it in that same order because you're probably used to having, you know, like the high woodwinds at the top and the strings at the bottom and, uh, you know, horns in the middle and stuff. So organize it that way. What I like to do is I just like to have the melodic instruments on the top and then the higher harmonic instruments, then the lower harmonic instruments, 
and then all the percussion. So it's sort of like a frequency spectrum thing. Like the voice, when I'm listening, the voice hits me up here, the drums hit me down here, the guitars hit me here. That's how I think about it. But that, also- that, 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 That's how I do it already. It's just a sort of difficult, if there's a lot of it at once to keep track of everything, even if it's in the right order. Do you name every track exactly what it is very clearly? No, that's a good idea. As soon as you make a track, name it something that you'll recognize. Hi-hat closed, hi-hat open. Here it's called Brooklyn. That's just a region of New York City. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's the snare drum. Okay, I can do that. This is sort of a crackly snare. Give it a name that you will recognize. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you some other things that you can do to medit or medit itty, edit MIDI. Um, I want to show you how you can edit velocity. And I'm going to, because there's a section here at the end. So here, I want there to be sort of this drum build. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of this stuff. And it's, it's okay. We can do this later. It doesn't matter. Um, so what I want is I want this thing that sort of goes like and I want it to build unfortunately with this MIDI keyboard it doesn't it doesn't uh, track your velocity so there's gonna be no dynamics so I'll show you how to edit velocity in MIDI so I'm gonna do this So the bum 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 bum. What am I gonna quantize this to? What's the what's the largest rhythm that I'm gonna quantize it to? Eighth note. Exactly. Very good. So I'm gonna quantize up here to eighth note. Let's listen to what we have. Ooh, notice this. Notice this. Did you hear how it slowed down? So what I did here is I actually have a tempo that slows down. So I go from about 100 beats per minute here down to like, what is it, 70 something. And what's handy about quantizing is it, even though the tempo is changing, it knew to lock up to this ever-changing tempo, and it locked up exactly to the grid, which is really handy. But the only problem here is right now the drummer is going bong, 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 like a robot, and I want it to go bong, 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 like that. So I'm going to open this up, and Logic is really nice with this. So here's our, you know what? Oh man, I only want to listen to this. How am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? Push the solo button. Push the solo button. I'm going to call this uh, outro. Drum outro. Labeling is so important. Okay, so I'm going to solo it. So now when I listen to it, it's going to be... Oh no, it's so static it's just doing the same thing i know i want this one to be loud and then i want it to go quiet louder 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 boo right there i can highlight these and you'll notice over here you have a scale that you can quantize it to if like you wanted it to be like snap to c major you can go on and then put it on C major, it can do that. But I'm gonna show you this velocity tool. Watch the color of these notes I have highlighted here when I move the velocity. Red, blue, purple. I think purple is the quietest one. So you have a velocity that ranges from one to 127. Watch what happens when we get to that red note now.
it's a little louder. You can't really tell, but I'll make these. I'll make these little greens. So that's kind of what I want to happen. But I wanted to go bum, 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 bum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of, okay, this velocity, actually I'm on a little lower. And I want these to probably be spaced out by like 10 or something. I want it to be like super loud and then down and then up 10 and then up 10, then up 10, then up 10. So this was about 40. I'll make this one about 50. I'll make this one 60. I'll make this one 70. I'll make this one 80. I'll make this one 90. I'll make this one 100. And then I want this to actually be, instead of an open hi hat, I, actually, I think I want this to be a crash. So I want to just go whoosh, like over here. Yeah, we'll have it that, we'll have it loud. So I'm gonna grab that velocity, turn it up. So now let's listen to what we have. Nice little rainbow. I want this to be a rainbow too. Should I go up here and edit it all? What should I do? Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Thank you, Steve Jobs. So you can copy and paste, like, I can go like this, that same click or press option and then drag, you can do that. You can do that with individual notes, you can do that with, cool. And it's pretty, isn't it? Okay, let's try it. Now let's listen to how this sounds. I'm gonna unsolo it so we can hear everything else. And let's just listen to the whole song that we have so far. I'm gonna turn off the clock. This is called a mix window and I can see everything that I have here and I can move it up and down how I want. Like, oh, I want this hi-hat a little louder. The snares are kind of loud. Oh, wow, we couldn't even hear our... There it is. There we go. We edited some MIDI drums. I'm gonna save that because I'm actually gonna, later in the DAW tips, I'll show you um, some other fancy things that I do. So- Erica um, found her Instagram. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no. Um, keep it a secret. It's not a secret. Okay. So are there any questions? I know that we focus most on, mostly on drums here and it's, and the problem with drums is that they're instruments that you play and then they decay really fast. So I know we have, we didn't really focus on like, how can we make a violin sound more realistic or a, or a saxophone or a flute, but hopefully you can take these like basic copy and paste these velocity editing tools and apply, they apply to every single instrument. You can, the experimentation is endless, but are there any, questions or things we can explore for a few minutes. Where did you find the velocity? So what I do is I just click, I just click on a MIDI region. Region is the term okay. for any of these little blocks. Uh, I'll click, let me click on the strings I have here. It, usually if you double click, I'm a Mac person. So that's what I'm used to. Me too you'll have these things over here and these will have the parameters. You can have this, okay. look, another option to quantize. Velocity is right here. So I can click on it. Were you able to find that, Josiah?
there's so you can you can either double click and find it there but the general thing is called a piano roll oh i should have said that if you ever want to find the place where you edit midi it's called a piano roll yeah i know where to find that okay um let me say window open piano roll so i have this kind of floating piano roll let's uh velocity should just be over here I, don't, I actually don't know what to tell you other than that. Do you see it? You can also get the piano roll by hitting the scissors button up near the uh, um, the voice editing tool and the mixer and the sound library. Those set of buttons. What here? Let me show you one other thing that's cool about um, MIDI. If you like, if I clicked on this drum outro and I wanted to create new MIDI blocks that didn't exist there. There's this thing, there are these tools here. You have the pointer tool, you have, if I change my pointer tool to a pencil tool, now I can literally go, whoops, oh my gosh. Wow, what is even happening? What I can do is I can just click and draw MIDI notes. And then from there, I can, uh, I can click and drag them, make them longer. I can change the velocity. I can copy and paste. I can quantize them. I can move this one here and move this one here. Um, any other questions? I, if you're having trouble finding velocity, Josiah, I'll, I'll help you later, but it might be a- um, I just want to say about, about the velocity, that, well, like, can, can you open up one of the piano rolls again? Sure. Which one? Should I do a drum one or a string uh, one? Do a string one. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. Um, okay. Um, in my experience, there there usually is a way to view the velocity, like um, down oh, oh, sort oh. of below. Like yes. it, there's a way of viewing the velocity of each individual note it's at the same a, time, where it sort of yeah, shows each one as like a bar. There there, yeah. there's, there should yeah. be some interface for that for viewing the velocity it's like the that. Like, Yes, yes, you're right. I it should forgot. be like at the bottom of the screen. Click the automation tool. The automation tool. There, there it go. is. There it is. Yeah, so if you hit automation. You, then you, can, you can see the velocity of each of those. Oh, I yeah. Think. And actually, yes. Actually, this would be, this could be a simpler way. Let me go back to my, this thing. Like what I was doing here where I was trying to turn this into like a rainbow and I kept going choo, choo, choo. This would actually have been way smarter for me to go down here and be like, okay, right. I want this here, I want this here, I want this here, I want this here. Ooh, it looks like it's right. duplicating them. But, oh, because that's because there are two notes. Anyway, uh, yes, that is a, that's actually a much smarter way of handling velocity because the colors are nice and the, the number, this number thing on the side is nice, but up and down is way more clear. Very good point. Very, very good in, point. In, in Reaper, it also changes the color of the up and down part at the same time as the color of the note. Ooh, Reaper wins in that regard then. Um, how, any other questions? we got like five minutes. Anything? Is there a way to uh, quantize an individual note? Yes, yes. If there's, like, if this note is, let me make this as, like, if I played Never seen the world from here. oh no that note was like way off right yeah that one if i just highlight that note and then i go to quantize oh wait no it didn't do it that's the problem I was having is it did all of them at once. Yeah, you should you should right click on the individual note. Oh. Hmm. Well, you know one way to quantize not, Josiah is just scoot since it's it over. one note. What yeah, just you, just click and move you, it. What if you click okay. scale quantize off to the side over there? This one? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's see what that does. That one, that actually did it. So I think when you're, I think when you're out here, like this quantize function is going to quantize the entire region you have highlighted. But once you're in this kind of step editor, 
you this is going to be individual one. Yeah. And you can, you can just have this set and actually pressing Q will do it. Oh, there's so many ways to do this. You can even swing. You can choose how much you want it to swing the note. If you want it to be like, boom, do, kong, do, 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 do. you can. Um, so if that's something you're interested in. Um, okay. Is it, was this applicable to what you'll be working with once you pull your MIDI into Logic? Will this be helpful? Hopefully. I know most people aren't using drums, um, but I'm a songwriter and I cannot help it. It is what I must do. Um, while, oh. No, go ahead. Oh. Okay. Um, while you were doing the thing, um, uh, I was kind of using your instructions and putting them into the song I was working on in FL Studio. So do you think I could like show that after you said what you were going to say? Yes. Because I kind of want your opinion on it. Yeah, please. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, if any of you have any questions or anything, email me. My email should be online or on uh, the Composers Online Institute. Um, well, let me stop recording. <laughs>